We'll be in 1 Timothy chapter 5. This whole chapter is self-explanatory. Uh, if you give me 15 minutes of your time, we'll get through uh, uh, verse 7 or 8 here. 1 Timothy chapter 5. As I study in this chapter, uh, there's not a lot really uh, popped out at me that that we really need to dig into. There's a couple of things, and I just want to do the whole chapter tonight, but we'll just, <coughs> we'll stop at verse eight. Explanation on how to uh, minister to widows could get a little long, so we'll, we'll do one through eight. First Timothy chapter five, one through eight. When everybody's there, I'll go ahead and read. We won't have to stand. Everybody there? Amen. It says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. Honor widows that are widows indeed, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to shew piety at home and to requit their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she uh, that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, and these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you today. God, so desperate for your word, so desperate uh, from a touch from you, God, and we know according to your word, God, that we need your word. For your Son, your only begotten Son, proclaimed that we can't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceedeth from your mouth. And God, we know your only begotten Son is the word of God, so we can't live without Jesus. So God, pour Jesus into us today. Let us learn more about you. Let us uh, understand these scriptures fully so we can grow in your grace, your mercy, and your truth. And whatever you do in each individual heart and whatever you do in our little church here at Sydney, Kentucky, God, remind us to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, like I said, we should be quick here, but we'll look at verse 1 and verse 2. Let's read those together. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, and the younger as sisters with all uh, purity. Uh, now that word rebuke, it means a strong expression of disapproval or to uh, reprove sharply. Uh, it almost looks like you're mad at this person when you rebuke somebody. You say, hey, that's wrong. Or as Jesus uh, rebuked Peter, but he wasn't really rebuking Peter, he was rebuking Satan. He said, I rebuke you, Satan. So this is a strong expression of uh, disapproval. And you see here it says to rebuke not an elder. An elder is male, not female. That's why they threw uh, verse uh, uh, 2 in. Uh, an elder is the position uh, or a, uh, an elder is someone that is a, uh, a leader or a, uh, a spiritual father of a church. We went over the difference between elders and deacons. Uh, but it says, entreat him as a father. Don't rebuke him or strongly uh, show a strong expression of disapproval. Uh, but entreat him as a father. So how are we supposed to treat? And we'll get into the word entreat in a second. But we are to honor our mothers and fathers. You see in verse 2 it says the elder women as mothers, uh, the younger as sisters with all purity. Now the word entreat means to ask earnestly or to beg. So this does not mean that uh, an elder is always right or it does not mean that an elder of the church should not be corrected. He said, don't rebuke them. He said, but entreat them as a father. Entreat is the same word. Uh, if you look up the Greek word, it's the same word that means exhort. Exhort means to uh, advise or recommend strongly. 
Uh, so it's not an open uh, expression of disapproval. You ain't going to disrespect or you don't need to disrespect an elder in public. Uh, but uh, on in verse 19, look over to verse 19. It says, against an elder receive not an accusation but before two or three witnesses. If an elder is in the wrong, this must be handled correctly. Because when an elder is publicly rebuked, okay, if I went to Johnny and just made a fool out of him in front of everybody, Johnny is a representative or an elder or a deacon. And we discussed last time that uh, our deacons are really doing a two-man job, elders and deacons. I have just damaged uh, the whole church by doing that because he is a leader. Uh, before any uh, leader in the church should even take an accusation and consider it uh, to go talk to an elder, they need to be two or three witnesses, what verse 19 says. So the way you treat an elder is, uh, it, it, this is a very serious thing. This is what the Holy Spirit uh, divinely inspired Paul to write to Timothy as a pastor of a church. Uh, when we, when a elder gets out of line, even an elderly woman, one of your women uh, leaders, when they get out of line, do not <laughs> publicly shame them. Do not uh, rebuke them openly, uh, but it has uh, to happen, uh, as I said, in treat them as fathers. So ask earnestly. Uh, beg them, uh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if they are an elder. If they're wrong, they're wrong. A lot of people will read that verse and say, okay, well, we don't rebuke an elder. And then they miss out what the word entreat means, but they say treat him as a father and younger men as brethren. If you're a kid and your daddy's wrong, there ain't no way you're going to tell him he's wrong, right? But in God's church, in the church of God, uh, if an elder is wrong, it has to be dealt with. But you respect him, you honor him as a father, you respect and honor the women as mothers, but you still deal with the problem. You just got to deal with it uh, the right way. Verse 1 2 does not say overlook faults of the elders, but handle them uh, respectfully. Respectfully. Uh, verse 3. <coughs> And Lord willing, we won't get time to get into it tonight, but uh, a pretty uh, uh, specific directions uh, are given to handle uh, widows. Uh, a lot of people uh, in this chapter and in the next, I'm pretty sure the next chapter, you'll see how to deal with people that's taking advantage of the church's giving. You ever seen that before? Uh, there is a time to cut them off. There's a time not to give. Uh, and that's why we have a benevolence committee here so they can, uh, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, make that decision. Which we haven't been able to use that here lately because we don't have uh, a lot to give. But there is a time when you cut people off and the directions that uh, he's going to give in 10 through, uh, I think, 15 uh, show how to handle widows. But in verse 3 it says, Honor widows that are widows indeed. Uh, what is a widow indeed? You can refer to verse 5 to see that. So we'll skip forward for a second and look at 5. Now she that is a, is, is a widow indeed and desolate... She trusteth in the Lord, and she continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. Verse 6 says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So there is a difference in widows. A widow indeed is somebody that you help. Uh, a widow that is uh, living in pleasure, she's dead while she liveth. We'll get into that in just a second. Uh, but verse 4, let's go back to verse 4 and then we'll uh, get deeper into the widows. Verse 4 says, But if any widow have children or nephews, this is something that the church does not do correctly. We are and it's a good thing to jump out there and help widows, but there is one thing that we are missing, okay? Verse 4 says, But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to shew pity at home and to requit their parents, for that is good and acceptable before uh, the Lord. Pity means to honor or show obedience. If that widow has children or nephews, 
You need to put out the same effort to reach them as you are helping her because it is their responsibility to help their mother or their grandmother uh, or their aunt. Uh, to requit means to show kindness or service. It is the responsibility of the widow's children or nephews or uh, uh, descendants, if you will, to take care of her before it is the responsibility of the church. If they're not going to take care of her, the church needs to step in and take care of her. But with the same intensity that, and the same compassion that they have to take care of the widow, they need to be reaching out to the nephew and to the son or the daughter uh, to get them in line uh, with God's plan for them. And their plan is to help their mother and father. Um, verse 6, uh, verse 5 says, Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day, but sh she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Um, Dead while she liveth. This is spiritually dead. Uh, you can refer to Revelation chapter 3 uh, uh, when Jesus gives his message to Sardis. He says, And to the angel of the church of Sardis write these things, saith he that hath the seven uh, spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Uh, these people were spiritually dead. Uh, in verse uh, verse 2 he says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come upon thee. Uh, and that is uh, pretty well explaining uh, the same uh, thing that this verse right here is explaining about this widow. If this widow, uh, she's lost her husband, uh, her husband's passed away, and now she is living in pre uh, pleasure, or she's going around uh, playing the harlot, if you will, uh, she is dead while she lives. She is spiritually dead, and she is not a widow that you would outreach to as far as necessities is uh, concerned. Outreach to her as far as getting her life right. Um, verse 7 uh, says, And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Uh, verse 7 is self explanatory. Uh, Many times Paul's telling Timothy, don't let no man despise thy youth, or uh, giving him uh, exhortation to speak boldly. If this is not taught, then these people don't know the truth. Therefore, the truth can't set them free because they are not in possession of the truth. But their possession of the truth will give them the ability to be blameless. Uh, where would you be if nobody ever told you about Jesus? Where would you be if nobody ever told you it was wrong? Uh, we would still be acting like children if our mommies and daddies didn't tell us that uh, we should share. Imagine how selfish that we would be as adults. Uh, so this verse is very uh, self-explanatory. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. So don't be afraid to tell them the truth, Timothy, because for them to be blameless, they're going to need you to tell them the truth. Uh, now verse 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially, you ever heard this verse before? It's not just talking about a man providing for his household. You can see the full context of this now. It says, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse uh, than an infidel. So this verse is not only talking about men providing for their families. That's where we like to uh, insert this verse in a conversation. It's, these are the situations that we like to bring this verse up is when uh, what we like to say, man's too sorry to work. He's same as an infidel. Uh, uh, it's not necessarily talking about that, even though it is at the same time. Uh, but what this is talking about is uh, uh, descendants not taking care of their mommies and daddies. Kids not taking care of their mothers and fathers is what this verse is talking about. Now it goes on to say, He hath denied the faith. Remember we talked about apostasy last, uh, last time, well last couple times. What he has done, he may be a believer, 
but he has denied it in his actions. And he is now worse than an infidel. What is an infidel? It's an unbeliever. One who does not believe in God. One who does not believe in God cannot uh, uh, lead others to Christ, can he? Well, now, you, if you are not taking care of your, your sickly or in need mother and father, you're worse than an infidel because your life has denied the faith or you have committed a, 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 what looks like apostasy. You're saying one thing, I'm saved, but you won't help your mommy and daddy. I'm saved, but I'm not ministering to the needs of my family. Uh, I'm a Christian, uh, but you can't see Christ in me. So you have denied the faith in your living and now you are worse than an infidel, uh, meaning that you are not able to further the gospel. We understand through the Word of God that uh, once you're saved, you're saved. The Bible plainly states that, but once you're saved does not mean that you're necessarily going to act saved. So take that home with you, especially us uh, younger adults, when our mommies and daddies need us, uh, we need to be there. Second Corinthians twelve fourteen. What time is it? Second Corinthians twelve fourteen. Let me read this to you real quick. It says, "Behold, this is uh, this is Paul talking to the Corinthian church. It says, behold, the third time I am ready to come unto you, and I will not be burdensome unto you." So what he's saying is he's not, I'm not going to come to you and uh, be burdensome to you. I'm not going to come to you and you're going to feel the effect of my presence uh, negatively. You ever have family come in or you've got a grown up child that you just, uh, they burden you. They're uh, uh, draining you dry financially, uh, emotionally. Uh, you just can't enjoy your life because uh, they're just stuck to you and draining you dry of everything you have. Paul's saying, I'm not going to come that way, come to you and be that way, is what he's talking about. He said, for I seek not yours, but you. I don't seek what you have. I don't seek what you have to offer. But I seek your life for your eternal benefit, is what he's saying. He says, for children uh, ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And that's what that saying is. Now, when a parent is a parent and they have a young children, it is their responsibility and their obligation uh, to take care of those children. Uh, the Bible talks about in the time of apostasy that there will be no uh, natural affection. That is a woman's love for her child. So we know that we are to take care of our children. But when it, the time comes, uh, the children don't need to be mooching off their mommy and daddy. Their mommy and daddy need to be mooching off their children, which means the children need to be taking care of the mommy and daddy. And that's what Paul said. He said, I've come to you and I'm not going to mooch off of you, uh, but I'm going to help you. Lord willing, we'll get deeper into the um, into that next time when we talk about widows. There is widows that you should help, and there's widows that you shouldn't put as much effort into. Uh, they need correction. Uh, a lot of times we enable people to stay in their evil state. Uh, but we'll get into that later. We need to do practice and get out of here before the road freezes. Circle prayer.